Critics immediately recognized an eerie similarity in this abbreviation to the secular religion invented by George Orwell in his book 1984. <laughs> oh my God. He's he's an actual nut job. What? I was not expecting this. This is the f this is the lead game designer. Commentators or comics who run afoul of its dictates will be hounded until they abase themselves in apology. Similarly, <laughs> any ideas that challenge its abase <laughs> or do you say debase themselves? <laughs> How dare you apologize for saying the N word? Do not submit. Do not. You may have had a relative who fought in the Civil War. Don't do it. Don't do it. Seinfeld. You're Jewish, Seinfeld. Don't apologize. Never apologize. Oh totally forgot we got to talk about the new harry potter game <laughs> oh my i i'm excited to talk about this all right i got a, i got a magical story for you all hold on let me put on some some harry potter music harry potter ship tune okay there we are my fellow muggles i do have a story of enchantment to tell every single one of you and that it actually doesn't involve J.K. Rowling too much this time. I know J.K. Rowling is constantly uh, in the news uh, for, well, not the news, but on social media just being the worst fucking, the most famous turf, easily. One of the biggest worst turfs in all turfendom. Uh, and yes, it is a horrifying, terrible thing that she's such a terrible turf. But for a long time, her turfiness was separated from her body of work because her body of work was considered uh, enchanting, beloved by all. And as someone who's only read one of the books, I've only read The Prisoner of Azkaban, and I had to do that as part of a university course, okay? Do not accuse me of being a Harry Potter fan, but I've also, I've been in uh, quite a few relationships, and every single one of my relationships uh, has been with someone who adored Harry Potter at one point or another. So I have also seen all the films. I know of the movies. I, I know the story, I know the plot, I know the arc, I know what happens, okay? But there's apparently a large part that you lose in the books. In the books, uh, sorry, in the movies if you haven't read the books. The books have a whole other storyline, and a handful of them, about some really fucked up yikesy shit. There's an entire uh, class of slaves in the book called House Elves, and they are decapitated if they are no longer useful. And they are actual literal slaves in the novels. They will be freed if they are given an article of clothing or something like that. So you can free them. But the majority of the characters, even the good characters in the books, are totally fine with this. This is not seen as like something we need to end now. We need to end slavery. The The excuse is that if they weren't slaves in, uh, in the books then they wouldn't know what to do. They wouldn't know what to do with themselves. It is very fulfilling for them to be slaves, so we must allow the hell cells to continue to be slaves. On top of the goblins, I'm sure you already heard already about uh, the incredible anti-Semitism of the goblins in Harry Potter, and there's an actual Star of David in the scene in the film where we meet the goblins, and every anti-Semitic trope you can think of is encapsulated in the goblins in Harry Potter. In the movies, is what people like to say. It's not as prominent, apparently, in the books. Again, I wouldn't know. But some super fucked up Yexy shit. Oh, on top of which, Hermione, Hermione, the beloved Hermione, is the only character that speaks out about this slave race of the house elves. She's the only one who's like, well, this is kind of fucked up. Why, why, why do we have slaves? Can we end this? And she's ridiculed for it. It was like, ah, silly Hermione. Silly Hermione, not knowing your place, or knowing the place of the slaves. <laughs> You're adorable, like a button. But we're not doing that. We're gonna we're gonna keep keep having slaves, because we like slaves, and they're lesser than us. They're 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 lesser because we're a, we're a better race than the slave race. So we're gonna keep doing that. I'm the hero <laughs> of the story. I'm a good. I'm I'm the beloved Hagbart. <laughs> you know, like every oh Haggard. Sorry, everyone loves me. I'm, I'm a beloved character. And shut the fuck up, Hermione. Know your place, Hermione. Stop being uppity about our slaves. We love our slaves. Why? Why? Okay, so y you get why? Why uh, things are so fucked up in Harry Potter? Which is why, obviously, I was extremely thrilled at the controversy surrounding Hogwarts Awakening. I, I think it's. 
I had no idea what to expect, okay, about this game, a game that some people are excited about. If you want to see what it looks like, here's, here's, you know, the graphics. Very cool, I guess. Welcome to Hogwarts Legacy. Oh You're a new student at the famed School of Witchcraft and Wizardry with I a unique ability to manipulate powerful ancient magic hidden oh in the wizarding world. Oh You'll need to uncover what's behind the return of this forgotten magic and who oh. is seeking to harness it to destroy wizardkind, as you may be the one that decides the fate of the entire wizarding world. Oh. But before you can study magic and begin to solve these mysteries, you must yeah. create the witch or wizard you want to be. <gasps> oh. Diversity. When you arrive at Hogwarts, you will be sorted into one of the four Hogwarts houses, Gryffindor, oh. Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, or Slytherin. After you settle into your dormitory, you will meet up with your housemates in the common room. You will then need to attend classes, and you do have some catching up to do, as you were starting Hogwarts late as a fifth year. So you are the new student. You'll begin your stuff. So you get it, right? You basically get to live as a Harry Potter character in the Harry Potter universe. And it's got, you know, some nice looking graphics. It, it has spells. It, it has, you know, anti-Semitic tropes, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so, you know, not someone who has really given two fucks about Harry Potter since, you know, I, I discovered that J.K. Rowling is a huge turf because at the end of the day, it wasn't a huge thing in my life before. It, it wasn't like, oh, like my, my precious, my precious Harry Potter, what, whatever will I do if I don't get to watch and enjoy the films anymore but in so many beloved cherished memories I mean they're 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 fine they're I, I really like uh the the prisoner of Azkaban specifically I think because uh Alfonso Cuaron is the director and I really like him as a director and he does good stuff and he made the creatures very cool and creepy and there's a lot of great British actors in the series it's fine it's and it's a fine couple of movies some of them are boring some of them are fine that's that's the extent of, of Harry Potter uh, and my review of Harry Potter but anyways, this whole thread was wild. I just saw that fancy-looking new Harry Potter game is about quelling a goblin rebellion that threatens to upend the social order, and you cannot convince me these people don't know what they're doing. It looks like a very well-crafted piece of right-wing propaganda. They didn't even have the shame to, like, present it as the goblin underworld or criminalize them. They're literally saying, these things are getting uppity, and we don't know their rightful place in society. What's funny is goblins aren't even the HP faction known for being enslaved and abused as part of the fabric of the supposedly wonderful and aspirational society. They're just telling on themselves at this point point the uber mentioned throwing off their change is threat number one it takes some real commitment to look at the various controversies surrounding harry potter and decide to go with the group people think is an anti-semitic stereotype aren't happy with their place in society as the main villain of your huge multi-million dollar media venture lord okay after googling what the actual fuck this is one of those great threads where not only is it like a, it's a revelation and you're learning a bunch of shit but also Everything that starts happening in order uh, is, is like someone discovering this for the first time in real life. The Goblin Rebellions were a series of rebellions in which the goblin population of the wizarding world revolted against discrimination and prejudice towards their kind by wizards and witches. They were the most prevalent during the 17th and 18th centuries, but even in modern times, there were subversive goblin groups working in secret against the British Ministry of Magic, according to the Daily Prophet. The historical rebellions have been described as bloody and vicious. History. One rebellion in 1612 took place in the vicinity of Hogsmeade Village, in which three broomstick inn was used as the wizard headquarters for the rebellion. In 1752, another goblin rebellion occurred in the Great Britain. Due to mismanaging the risk rebellion, Minister of Magic Albert Boot resigned. His replacement, Basil Flack, lasted only two months, resigning when the goblins allied themselves with the werewolves. Hef, uh, Hephaestus Gore was then elected minister. And I, I'm not apologizing for mispronouncing the names because it's nonsense written by a turf and fuck that noise. History. One rebellion in 1612 took place in the vicinity of Hogsmeade Village. In the Three Broom Six Inn was used as the wizard headquarters for the rebellion. In 1752, another goblin rebellion occurred in Great Britain. Due to mismanaging this rebellion, Minister of Magic Albert Boot resigned his replacement Basil Flax. Sorry, we read that. Uh, another rebellion took place in the 18th century and was noted to be a popular one when Erg the Unclean... <laughs> Goblin participated in that one and was featured on a chocolate frog card for doing so. In 1890, there was yet another rebellion under the leadership of Ranrock. 
Hogwarts. the unclean. The Goblin Rebellions were one of the most important topics Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry students studied in History of Magic. For the final exams during the first year, they had to memorize the dates of the Goblin Rebellions. During the fourth year, Ron Weasley would not remember all the names of the Goblin Rebels and invented some, by luck he guessed, Erg the Unclean's name correctly. In his History of Magic, Ordinary Wizardry level in 1996, Harry Potter skipped question four, which asked whether wand legislation contributed to the Goblin riots of the 18th century. Given the anger expressed by some of the goblins, such as Griffook, about wizards denying goblins the right to use wands, it may indeed be a contributing factor to past rebellions. You silly goblins, you can't use wands, especially you, Erg the Unclean. According to Wombat, these rebellions may have occurred because of a lack of goblin representation on the Wizen Gamut. <laughs> Attempts to enslave goblins as house elves, <laughs> stripping off wand privileges, wizards attempt to control gringots, or a brutal goblin slain by Yardley Platt. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Uh, Harry Potter world building is utterly deranged. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the scenes, according to the one about these rebellions of occur because of lack of goblin. Oh, yeah, that's the one I was just reading. Okay, I'm convinced this is intentional trolling now. Harry Potter game designer used to run anti social justice YouTube channel. One of the lead designers for Hogwarts Legacy previously ran a YouTube channel where he referred to the Me Too movement as a moral panic. Hmm. It's, it's odd these things are all lining up, eh? Freelance journalist Liam Robertson tweeted screenshots of Avalanche Studios' lead designer Troy Levy's YouTube account from February 19th that showcased videos with titles such as The Injustice of Social Justice, In Praise of Cultural Appropriation, In Defense of John Lasseter, a former Pixar executive who left the company in 2018 following sexual misconduct allegations. Levitt's comments on social media combined with Harry Potter creator J.K. Rowling's anti-trans comments on social media incentivized Resetera to ban all promotional material uh, regarding the upcoming video game. This is the first time we've done something like this, and we consider this a very exceptional case, uh, they said on Tuesday on the forum. It's not just one bigoted game designer that made the difference here. J.K. Rowling's singular reach and influence, how closely that influence is tied to the Harry Potter IP, and what she chooses to do with that power is a unique problem on top of this latest controversy. Levitt's YouTube account, which has been inactive since 2018, primarily featured video blogs where the game designer criticized various social justice movements and expressed support for Gamergate controversies, an online harassment campaign against several... He was a fucking Gamergate uh, critiquer, wow, uh, against several female game designers, feminist media critics, and so-called social justice warriors that began in 2014. Levitt referred to the Me Too movement as a moral panic in the video defending Lassiter and claimed that uh, society gave preferential treatment to the LGBTQ and disabled individuals, women, and persons of color in a video titled Social Justice. This Ten Commandments. Does that video still exist? Showeth bigotry. On July 14th, 2017, YouTube personality Lacey Green was interviewed on The Rubin Report. During the interview, Lacey noted that her experience with questioning accepted beliefs found within the social justice community reminded her of her experiences with questioning her Mormon religion from her youth. You have this community that is organized around moral principles and you feel really repressed and shamed and restricted whenever you have a you commit a thought crime and you have to confess and you have to apologize when you make a mistake but your apology is never really good enough you always are deep down an, an original sinner yeah. you know and yeah, you have to be this is the lead game the designer by the way whose video we're watching right now exact thing. like Lacey, i too was once a mormon hence Lacey's comments inspired me to think about the social justice movement in terms of religion from there, I abstracted some common themes that I have observed within the movement and translated them into statements that appear to represent their directives. He, this is 125. He talks so slow. I'm going to 15 it. In so doing, my aim is to help explain why the social justice activists think, act, Anus. and behave as they do. To that end, here are the social justice Ten Commandments. No joy! Production value. Commandment number one. Thou shalt have no gods or religions before social justice. For the most part, the social justice movement is secular in nature. On its face, it generally rejects religion as being a tool of both past and present oppression. There are some exceptions, but even in those cases, social justice causes are given priority above religious faith. However, much like religion, the social justice movement is an all-encompassing framework that its adherents use to view... Wait, what? What are you talking about? Did, like... Do people who have, uh, like, if you're in a protected class, do you not have to pay taxes? Am I missing something? The world. It reigns supreme in its influence upon the minds of its believers, and they will jealously submit to no other ideology. It is also faith-based in that it presumes that adherence to its tenets will result in an improved society. Tellingly, 
Some early proponents of social justice shortened the name for their emerging secular religion to be Sokjus. <laughs> Critics immediately recognized an eerie similarity in this abbreviation to the secular religion invented by George Orwell in his book 1984. <laughs> oh my God. He's he's an actual nut job. What? I was not expecting this. This is the fucking this is the lead game designer. <laughs> oh my god, Noam Chomsky. Thank you. I appreciate it. What the fuck? Called Ingsoc. Ingsoc was newspeak for English socialism and represented the totalitarian oh, political wow. ideology which gave rise to Big Brother. Oh, As wow. the nine other social justice commandments demonstrate, this similarity runs deeper than the abbreviation. Commandment number two. Thou shalt elevate feelings over fact. Social justice has its roots in the philosophy of postmodernism. Thanks, Ben this Shapiro. This philosophy rejects the notion oh, of objective... Oh, wow, we're already in postmodern. Is, when's Marxism coming up? Truth, and instead believes that everything is subjective. There is no independent reality... There is only interpretation and narrative. This means that, in a fundamental sense, anyone's interpretation of reality is potential. Like, you had to have known when you Googled him, as you were hiring him, as, as a, like a company, you would have, like every big company Googles who they are going to hire, especially for a position this high, you had to have found this channel. I, I can't believe that this is a surprise. Potentially as valid as is anyone else's. What we regard as truth is actually a socially concerned, simply listen Go. and- And my, my response to that was, if I personally were committed to enforcing decolonization, science as a whole is a product of Western modernity and the whole thing should be stretched off. <laughs> Commandment number three. Thou shalt honor the victim. Let her be your standard. The feminine personal pronoun here is deliberate. As he, he did apparently quit after the story came out. Well, I mean, uh, did they remove all of his influence on the video game? <laughs> Being a woman in pain or trouble generally inspires greater sympathy than that afforded to a man. This commandment supports the directive described in the second commandment to inflame emotions rather than speak to reason. By focusing on how an individual... The utility of these stories and promoting number four. Thou shalt venerate the sacred seven identities. Oh no. The oh, sacred no. seven identities are women. <laughs> How did you not find this? The seven sacred identities. Well, you know what? Hey, based uh, as someone who's partly in one of the seven sacred identities, base. Actually, no, I'm in two of them. I'm in two of the seven sacred identities. <laughs> Black, Hispanic, Native American, LGBTQ, hell Hispanic, yes, and newly sacred Muslim. <laughs> These identities have been agreed upon as being sacred because of their power to inspire emotional responses to the previous oh two commandments. They are venerated primarily for their utility. This is certifiable shit. What the fuck? It's like, it's not even that he's like, uh, I'm going to make the anti-SJW compilation and laugh and get the liberal tears. Uh, it's not even that. This is like, this is far further. Allow them to be regarded as a victimized or oppressed identity and hence excludes them from being regarded as a sacred identity to be protected musical wow. the book of mormon is celebrated by those adhering to the secular religion of social justice <laughs> but had something similar been done to parody what muslim what are you talking about <laughs> so many people were offended by that musical <laughs> oh wow the quran the outcry among the acolytes would have been furious and deafening commandment wait am i gay uh i i'm 25 percent gay there's another bingo uh square for you but i'm i'm, I'm like uh, a little by, but mostly straight and definitely straight passing for the most part. Although my partner was able to come up with that figure. She was the one who told me that. She's like, Lance, you're gay, but like, you're, you're just a little gay. You're like, you're like 25% gay. <laughs> I was like 25% gay. I'll accept that. That seems like, I mean, the math checks out. That seems, that seems like a good way of, of saying it. <laughs> Number five. Those of white skin are born under original sin and must repent. In the Judeo-Christian- Did you say your father was Chilean? Well, my father was born in Santiago, Chile, but he's actually Catalonian, if you want to trace the actual origins and uh, 23 and Mimi. Uh, so it would, it would go back to Catalonia, is where you would find that. And my, uh, my mother is Métis uh, from Saskatoon. Uh, yes, which is uh, in, in Canada, in, in the made-up country of Canada. In tradition, all people are born into original sin due to the transgression of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. In the social justice tradition, Original sin is also tied into your ancestry. Your personal degree of sinfulness is based upon the color of your skin. The new speak word in social justice. <laughs> Canada is real. 
I'm not coping, okay? I've, I've admitted it. Canada is not real. I've been the first one. This is, this is way wilder than I thought. As oh, with the other no. commandments, logic is irrelevant, and only the emotional utility for advancing the Sokja's narrative is of any importance. For example, no one seeking to shame someone on the basis of white privilege considers that some of that person's ancestors could have been on the side that was fighting to free the slaves and may well have shed their blood or given their lives in that struggle. Given the intermingling of family lineages, this case is not only possible, but likely probable. <laughs> Nevertheless, the emotional power of shaming someone by invoking their imagined privilege... Like, not even Crowder does this kind of stuff. Like, this is... <laughs> I'm sure he thinks it, <laughs> but, like, what the fuck? ...is considerable, <laughs> which, in turn, means that the converted... This is deep end. Their original oh, yeah. ...obedience and self-effacement before the Sokja's dogmas. Aren't you quite aware by holding that video? <laughs> you social justice warriors don't even realize that I had a father who fought the Confederacy. <laughs> I can never be racist. <laughs> I come from a line. <laughs> Thou shalt not blaspheme against Sokju. Control language for social that, justice. Every time I hear this word, it, it reminds me of like Oju. I, 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 it's, it's making me want to like dip, dip a beef sandwich in something. Sacolites is profound and Orwellian in nature. Not only is the movement rife with jargon, it also stridently opposes the mere whispering of words that it finds inappropriate. Commentators or comics who run afoul of its dictates will be hounded until they abase themselves in apology. Similarly, <laughs> any ideas that challenge its... Abase themselves? <laughs> or did you say debase themselves? <laughs> like, how dare you apologize for saying the N-word? Do not submit! Do not... S you may have had a relative who fought in the Civil War! <laughs> Don't do it! Don't do it! Seinfeld! <laughs> You're Jewish, Seinfeld! Don't apologize! <laughs> Never are apologize! Not permitted. Wrong thing is a sin. Uh. Criticism is harassment. Free speech is recast as hate speech. And speakers who give words to oppositional views are protested and shouted down. The only language that is allowed is that which passes the abundant and what vigilant- was that? What was Action Bronson? Oh, does, is Action Bronson problematic? I like his cooking shows. I'm not as big a fan of his hip hop. It's not bad. Some of it is good. I just kind of feel like I've heard his flow from other people who do it better. But I, I do enjoy his cooking shows. What did, what did he do wrong now? That's I, I don't want to lose Action Bronson. He's, he's, he's got a good... I uh, had a good vibe, I guess. What? Uh, is it happening in real time? Action. No! <laughs> is there a link for this video? I just I, I just Googled Troy Levite and this popped up. It was like, yeah, it's still very easy to find. This is 34,000 views. There is no way the company that made Hogwarts, uh, Hog, Hogwarts Awakening... Fucking... Uh, didn't know about this. Like, didn't know... Maybe not specifically this video, but didn't know that he had a channel like this. And censors of social justice. All else is blasphemy. Commandment number seven. Thou shalt employ authority to impose thy virtues. Members of the social justice religion are so self-assured of their righteous aims that they see no reason to wait for the rest of the populace to be converted. Per the second commandment, power is the means by which a given narrative comes to be accepted as true. Are you unironically showing the Ben Garrison cartoon on screen right now? And so they seek to ally with new or existing institutions of authority and thereby coerce any opposition into submission. Legislation that enforces their new speak to- Holy shit. You legitimately are scared and trying to scare people. You don't get police raids because you're an asshole. It's not, it's not why the police come to your house. Are they going to kick in the door? We saw your tweet. You didn't use these or pronouns. That was hate speech. Because of that, we're going to Roblox you. Terms and prosecutes blasphemy is encouraged. Campus sexual assault tribunals are organized with the express intent of circumventing due process in their zeal to convict the accused. Human rights commissions are created to assist in ferreting out and punishing non-compliant voices. Bill C-16 in Canada demonstrates this commandment in action. <laughs> <laughs> Always comes back here and bring on Jordan Peterson. This newly enacted law requires its citizens to respond with of a properly course, Of course. You fucking asshole. <laughs> You've done so much damage. One Kermit sounding motherfucker has done so, ruined so many young men's minds. So many of them have been corrupted by this asshole. All believe this lie. He lied. He lied to any still lying about it. And everyone still thinks it's true. Vented words when compelled to do so. So now, oh, not only can he be found guilty of the things you do or oh, say- Oh, there it is! Uh, the dreaded Z! Z here! Her. Oh god, it's coming! Oh. 
but also of things that you do not do or say. Persuasion. <laughs> or else. Of the unconverted is not. It added gender to the list of protected classes in Canada, so you can't do things like commit genocide against them. It's, it's it was it, no one's gone to jail for misgendering somebody. It's zero, because it's not a law in this country. Chico gets it. Chico gets it. Chico only barks at turfs, by the way. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I did not train him to do that. He learned it innately. He's a good doggo, and then he just barks at turfs, and that's it. And so then, then that's then I know, you know, he's doing he's doing the Lord's work. That's all I'll say. Necessary when your ideology can be enforced via authority. Commandment number eight. Thou shalt seek grievances against Sokjas to fuel thine holy outrage. Since emotion, not reason, is the key to both activism and the conversion of the uninitiated, social justice acolytes constantly surveil the world around them for any infractions that might be potentially inflammatory. The impact of such infractions was, is irrelevant. I wasn't and, expecting to watch so much of this. I just can't believe how fucked up the whole thing that is. That's sexual harassment? Is that what you just did when you said that to me? What, humongous? Why would you say that to me? You asked me my name. Why would you say that to me? Why would I say it? Why would you say that to me? Why would you ask me my name? What? Humongous what? Humongous what? Humongous what? Humongous what? This person just, sexu just, just spoke to me in a sexually harassing oh, way. I did not. Yeah, he did. He said, he said... Commandment number nine. Even being a member of the Sacred Seven Identities will not provide immunity should one start to challenge or ask questions about the accepted doctrine. Since Sokja's acolytes seek to establish the truthfulness of their narrative via appeals to authority. I'm a Muslim reformer who is being smeared as an anti-Muslim extremist by angry white liberal. <laughs> like, so many people, and, and this is the thing I don't understand about the, the, like, the irrational fear of the social justice warrior or, or this whole thing. Or, I'm sorry, oh, the Sokju. Oh, yes, a good old bowl of Sokju, if you will. Um, is that so many people have said really, really fucked up things, and they've been canceled online uh they've been ostracized from their communities online or whatever you want to say uh and uh, have bounced completely back or been not affected by it at all uh, many many times i mean yes you can point towards examples in which people are like well i mean what about lindsay ellis lindsay ellis effectively got canceled off the internet and, and that's you know that's a horrible thing uh I would say for the overwhelming majority, if people, and especially in the case of people apologizing, I think uh, you should normalize uh, apologizing. You should normalize, like, it's not uh, debasing yourself. It's it's, it's base in yourself. But no, it, 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 it's it's a good thing if if you suddenly take in a whole bunch of criticism and you're like, okay, fine, uh, I, was, I was wrong to have said that. Uh, hey, I'll give you an example. Uh, I didn't know uh, the M slur was even a slur for little people. And it was in the middle of a live stream, and I was just talking about it. I was telling uh, telling a story uh, of something I'd seen in a movie, uh, dropped it like two or three times, and the chat was just like, Bram! Uh, and I was like, whoa, what the hell? Why is everyone freaking out? And then immediately, I was like, oh, shit. Well, I, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that I was using it in that term. I, I sincerely apologize to little people and the, the little people community and everyone that I've, that I've offended by using that term. I did not know it was a slur. Uh, I, I had no idea. Uh, and then, you know, immediately afterwards everybody is like oh okay yeah like i i don't see why that was a bad thing uh, for me to have done that or for for anyone to do that i i, I don't get it like normalize learning and then i don't know evolving evolution's pretty cool i guess they see no need to engage with those of the unwashed populace. And also, if people have apologized for their shitty takes in the past and you know done whatever righted the wrong don't start don't keep using that as ammunition against them in in the future uh it, it, it's like if there is no room that like this is mostly nonsense conspiracy ridden gibberish okay but there is some truth not to anything he's saying but to the idea that if there is no room for forgiveness in any kind of movement or group or anything uh then uh, ultimately how are you ever going to leave the door open for people you want to convert because most likely a lot of people have done and or said fucked up or shitty things in their lives at one point or another it's the, the what is more important is you don't want them to continue to reinforce these systems in the future, right? To to that 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 is the aspect of it. Here's his Twitter account. Who differ oh, no. in outlook or opinion? Open discussion and dissent with outsiders is not just discouraged; it is regarded as a form of religious infidelity. Irrespective of sacred identity or even prior service to social justice causes, those who later challenge soap just tenants can face disciplinary action that may range from accusations of apostasy to outright public excommunication. Unrepentant sinners can come to be regarded as fair game and may consequently face harassment, death threats, or physical violence. 
Wait, this is a rabbit hole within a rabbit hole. What the hell is Last Stand? The home of Sacred Symbols, a PlayStation podcast, Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast, Knock Back, Last Stand Media, a retro nostalgia podcast. Is that like, is this like a Chud thing? Five years ago, I launched Last Stand Media, Colin Moriarty. Today is the most popular podcast, game related podcast in the history of crowdfunding. Is this some, yes? Oh, okay. I was like, I don't know what this is. It had to be made. Um, someone had to make it, and I think I. Oh, okay. now we're into the red pill section. Limiting them. You covered Business. everything. Acolytes will proudly gird themselves in the self-made armor of the social justice warrior to take up arms and physically intimidate masks and clothes largely go unspoken by its acolytes. By acknowledging their existence, we can better understand both the beliefs and the behaviors of this rising secular religion. Furthermore, through these commandments, we can see that the intent of Sokjust is not to promote freedom, liberty, or even equality. Rather, it is simply to overwhelm all other opposing ideologies In on its way towards becoming the one true faith that subsumes or subjugates all others. Powers and tearing human minds to pieces. There will be no art, no literature, no science. When we are omnipotent, we shall have no more need for science. O'Brien describing the aims of Ingsoc in Orwell's 1984. Oh! Oh, that's, yeah, so that's... If we release ourselves from the Sunlock and get back to the last thing in this... Yeah, we're gonna go walking. I have to finish one last point, okay? I promise. I know. You want to go outside. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've been a terrible father. I've abandoned my child! I've abandoned my child! Okay, so, people are saying the plot is also about the rebelling goblins abducting children, and I was like, okay, no way this is real, and I went and looked at the trailer. I can't sit through the whole thing, but yeah, that seems to be the case. Wow. So the goblins actually abduct kids. 535 in this mess if you want to see it for yourself. Between the goblins and dark wizards. You said you could get to the child when they came to Hogsmeade. That all you needed was a distraction. I gave you a distraction. I just watched a student take down your distraction. Who is this child? Are you not telling me? But perhaps you shouldn't involve yourself with that just yet. Let's go. Damn. Kind of, kind of scary that those pesky... Goblins are stealing children. Um, well, that's wild. That's wild. Doesn't seem uh, doesn't seem as full of magic and whimsy. Uh, spurred on by the controversies already surrounding the upcoming game, several users on the popular gaming forum Reset Era have asked the moderators to ban Hogwarts Legacy discussion, although due to both Rowling's influence on the franchise and uh, Levitt's work as a lead designer. Video games are made by massive teams of people with vastly different backgrounds, viewpoints, and opinions. Even as a lead designer, it's very unlikely that Levitt single-handedly infected every aspect of Hogwarts Legacy with an anti-feminist agenda. That said, it's obvious why folks might be wary of interacting with the game developed by someone with his beliefs, adapted by the works that have been sullied by the creator's own bigoted worldview. But also, as as we're starting to learn, the books are actually kind of yikesy. Like, uh, sure, there's all these fun, creative things. It's like, oh, we play Quidditch, and you have to catch the golden snitch, and you fly on a broom, and it's magical, and the whimsy, and look at this, I have a Patronus, and I have to use that. This is my Patronus. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you got me in the face, Chico. Oh, we're gonna go, okay? We're just... We're putting the bow on this. We're putting the, the end bow on, on this adventure. Um... I completely lost my chain of thought. Get him, Lord Chico. I think I have to take this dog out. I can't. I can't mock and make fun of uh, Harry Potter anymore. The, the the goblins and all that other stuff. Do you enjoy the serps, but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form, available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out. Apparently, and it's free just like the podcast. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, we are prepared to conduct many a human sacrifices in your honor. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are but your humble yet incompetent gestures, trying in vain to bring some levity into your life. To our lord, Trevor R., we give you thanks for this meager plot of land for us to toil away our pathetic existence. To our brave knights, Carl Wauer, Tony, DM Rivera, Resident Scarecrow, Sir Nickus, Mayred, Cheryl Alvarez, Ruben Kelly, Brandon, Words Greenwood, Nate, Hagbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, 
Ariane McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, Coulter Smith, Jenna Tao, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodle Hawk, The Tim Caucus, Multi Mondi, Trevor Janis, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, Catherine, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Agent NDN, Violent Orchard, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We salute our mighty heroes off to conquest some bread in some far off lands. <laughs>